The Hon. Ruth Dyson. Mr Speaker, if there is any legislation that demonstrates the increasingly arrogant nature of this Government, then this legislation is a fine example. Um, New Zealand and New Zealanders have been so proud for so long of being the country where women first won the right to vote. We are very proud of that. We boast about it at every opportunity, and so we should. That movement that won the right for women to vote was started in Canterbury. Uh, we had the first woman member of parliament from Canterbury, actually from my electorate. So, so our region and our country has a very proud tradition in regards to democracy. And here we have a minister who not just today, not just once, but on many, many occasions has misled the people of Canterbury. First of all, by misrepresenting the reasons for sacking the democratically elected ECAN councillors, and then by telling us, not once but twice, now three times, that this was a short-term plan. 2010, we were told this was short-term, we'd get our right back to vote. Then it was extended again, we'd get our right back to vote, and now it's been extended yet again. Who, who could trust the word of that minister with regard to restoring our democratic right to vote for our entire regional council in the same way that every single other person in the country does. The 2009 Creech report, written by the Right Honourable, or led, sorry, not written, led by the Right Honourable Wyatt Creech, a man whose work I respect, whose political views I don't always share, but I certainly um, regard highly in terms of his integrity. He made it very clear that there was no dysfunctionality in ECAN. And the members who believe what Nick Smith just said should read Wyatt Creech's report of 2009 because it has not one reference to ECAN being dysfunctional. The minister knows it, and the minister knows the real reason why the council was sacked. It was solely to get more water out of Canterbury Rivers into irrigation. That's the sole reason for ECAN being sacked. And, and actually, the Speaker himself confirmed that at a conference. The Honourable David Carter confirmed that on the public record at a conference to Irrigation New Zealand, where he said this, the election of four councillors in the previous election, the election of four councillors point of, point of on a Save Our point, Water ticket. Point of order. Point of order, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Long standing practice and very specific standing order uh, that a member shall not bring the Speaker into the debate on a bill. Um, yes, I hear what the member is saying. <clears throat> um, the, the member speaking, however, is referring to an event prior to the current speaker being the speaker, and in that context, I'm allowing it to continue. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Thank you, um, Mr Speaker. And the reason I can is because um, the presiding officer is aware of the contribution that the, the current speaker, before he no, was no, made no, the speaker, you, no, made no, at the Irrigation no, New no, Zealand conference. No, no, you're now bringing me into the debate. And that's completely wrong. So just keep me out of it. Honourable Ruth Dyson. So in April 2010, David Carter said to the Irrigation New Zealand conference, we had to act regarding ECAN, this is a quote, because the situation was untenable if we are to seriously make progress in delivering irrigation. Nothing about dysfunction, nothing about corruption, nothing about mismanagement, as were the cases in every other instance when the government had to intervene to take away democratic rights. There was always corruption or mismanagement or dysfunctionality. This was about getting more water out of Canterbury Rivers for irrigation, sole reason. He said, I would have thought what happened recently regarding ECAN would be a signal to all regional councillors to work a bit more constructively with their farmer stakeholders. Well, I think they should work constructively with their farmer stakeholders, but that does not mean that irrigation should win every argument. In Canterbury, we have the largest percentage of the total New Zealand water take. Our aquifers are polluted. The Canterbury uh, District Health Board representative, the public health specialist, has said that in some parts of Canterbury, newborn babies 
should not be fed with formula that is made with water that should be able to be drunk straight from our tap because it could poison a newborn baby. That, this is New Zealand in 2016, and yet Minister Nick Smith is continuing the drive by not giving us our vote in Canterbury to democratically elect our regional council. He's continuing that drive of irrigation over democracy. When challenged about his repeated change of circumstances, his misrepresentation of when we were going to get our right to vote back, he said we're not going to return to, to a full election in Canterbury because it's too risky. Too risky to give people of Canterbury a right to vote. I wonder what the Minister for Local Government, the Minister for Women, thinks about the fact that we're only getting half a vote in this bill. The country that was so proud of having women win the right to vote first, and this parliament is taking away half that vote for Canterbury. Um, Mr Speaker, we've got a complete gerrymander in the numbers as well, but that's not surprising. The people of Christchurch are going to have far less representation than people in the rural areas. Why would that be, I wonder? Where is the drive for irrigation? Does it come from Christchurch or does it come from the surrounding areas in Canterbury? It clearly comes from the rural community where they will have a much stronger voice on the regional council because there's fewer voters required to elect a regional council uh, member. Mr. Mr Speaker, I think this is an outrage. It's a breach of the faith that people had in 2010. We have had misrepresentation about the reasons for it, and if any member doubts that, they should read the Creech report of 2009. There is, they, they would be shocked because the minister has told things about that report that are not true. And I think the right honourable Wyatt Creech deserves more respect from this House. He was a Deputy Prime Minister in this Parliament and he deserves more respect than having his report misrepresented. And, and I don't believe the Minister with what he just interjected and I challenge him to have that, that implication put in writing and I bet he can't deliver it. So in 2007, we had four ECAN councillors who were elected on a Save Water ticket. That was the wake-up call for the government. That was the wake-up call to them that people in Canterbury were getting so upset at draining of our rivers that we wanted to elect people who would put a stop to it, who would look at the water management strategy. The, the other misrepresentation that the Honourable Nick Smith does regularly is say there was no water plan in place. 2004, 2004, that water plan was in draft form and it's basically the same as it is now. It was prepared by the previous elected councillors. He says that Canterbury was poorly managed and had lower outcomes. His own area of Tasman has poorer outcomes than Canterbury. Have they been set? Have they been set? No, they have not, because there is no irrigation pressure there. There is no political pressure there. This is not an argument about functionality, about corruption, about mismanagement. It is an argument where we have had our democratic rights taken away. We also had our rights to appeal to the Environment Court taken away and we had our protection, our special protection for our rivers taken away. The, the, there is no justification for that. Of course, if you have an elected body which has corruption or dysfunctionality or mismanagement, I don't think there'd be a single member in the House who wouldn't support it, of course reluctantly, but wouldn't support it until there was functionality restored. But no such justification has ever existed in the case of ECAN. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think this is a very sad day for democracy in New Zealand. It's a very sad day that this parliament sees a move as serious as this being taken on the basis of misrepresentation. And it was quite clear through the select committee process that the submitters understood what the real driver <laughs> behind this for 
1,167 submissions on this legislation, 1,152 were opposed. Just 15, one five submissions supported it, and they were primarily from irrigators. I understand why they supported it. So 1,167 submissions, 1,152 opposed, and yet the government, in its out of touch and increasingly arrogant way, rides roughshod over our democracy, rides roughshod over the submitters, and is going to ram this bill through. Uh, the